Hello and welcome back to Steam with Steve. Today we're going to keep going on with some algebra substitution. We're going to look at a thing called the communication law. Now this law is really important when we look at operations and seeing if they're balanced um, depending on the order that we do. So let's jump on in. So the first thing, just a quick little recap, when we do substitution, wherever we have a variable in an equation, we must insert that number that we're substituting in into that variable's position. So for example, if we had y is equal to 6a plus 2b, and we've made a is equal to 5 and b is equal to 3, wherever there's an a, we're going to inject a 5, and wherever there's a b, we're going to inject a 3. And we do this by wrapping around in brackets, and then we just solve as normal. So we'll do 6 times 5, which gives us 30, and then 2 times 3, which gives us 6, and then add that together to get 36. So what's the point of algebra? I keep hearing this question a whole heap of times. Well, it helps us to understand the universe. There's a whole heap of different formulas and functions that we've been able to map out there with the universe, like E equals MC squared, um, uh, the, the vector functions, all these different speed functions, all these things um, are linked and they allow us to um, work out a formula to represent certain things in the world. Now I've got a cool little video here, I'll put the link in the video down below. Um, it does go through why algebra does matter. Um, have a look at that and it should give you some insight. For me, I like Rugby Union, that's one, probably one of my favorite games. So I love um, making a, a formula for the rugby. So the way that the game works is scored like below. So you get five points for a try, two points for a conversion, and then also three points for a penalty kick. So we can actually make a rugby formula. And it's pretty simple. The team's total score can be calculated using this formula. So the score is equal to five times how many tries, or T, um, plus two times how many conversions, or C, plus three lots of penalties, or P. So quick little challenge here using the rugby formula. So 5T plus 2C plus 3P. Let's see if we can work out who won this game. So we're using the rugby formula, work out who won the following match. We've got old Australia versus New Zealand. So All Blacks versus Wallabies, always a classic. Here we go. So the first step is I'd write the rule, then I'd substitute it in. So five times four plus two times three plus three times five, which gives us 20 plus six plus 15, which gives us 41. Whereas the New Zealander side, we get five times six plus two times two plus three times two, which gives us 30 plus four plus six, which gives us 40. And look at that, the good old Wallabies won. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into how a formula could be used in the real world. So the next one is the communication law. So the communication law um, is pretty interesting. Basically what it means is you have different operations and you can they either satisfy the communication law or they don't satisfy it. So only two of these four operations I'm about to show you satisfy the communication law. So you've got plus, minus, times, and divide. And with plus, does the question that you just need to ask yourself, if you change the order around, does it still equal the same thing? So if you do six plus three, does that equal three plus six? And it's pretty simple, yes it does. Nine does equal nine. If we had six minus three, does that equal three minus six? And actually doesn't, it equals negative three. So three does not equal negative three. And then with times, if you do six times three, um, does that equal three times six? And then yep, that does. And the last one, if you do nine divided, sorry, six divided by three and then three divided by six, two does not equal a half. So with um, adding and multiplying, they're the only two that satisfy the communication law. So if you're not worried about the order, um, that's basically what it is. So the communication law, really simple. It basically means that you can swap the numbers and still get the same answer. And that only works for adding and timesing. So what is the right way we, when we express a variable? This is really important when we get to harder things. Um, all of these are valid, except probably with the 5x, y2. Um, but there's a better way of writing it. And it's actually the one in the middle here. So you always write the number first, then you put the, alpha, the letters in alphabetical order. So 10 and then the x, y. This is the best way of writing it so you don't get confused when we do um, more complex things later down the track. So always put the numbers first and then in alphabetical order, write the variables if there's multiple variables timesing itself. So when we write our multiply, have a go at this, pause the video, see if you can punch these guys out. Cool, so for the first one, three times two is six, 
The next one, negative two times five also does equal negative 10. So you should hopefully see that there is, um, order doesn't really matter. This one here, negative two times seven does equal negative 14. And similarly, if we swap them around, seven times negative two also equals negative 14. And the last one here, just to fix those up, instead of saying y, y times y times two, a better way of saying that is two y squared. And similarly down here, it's better to write three a squared b. Cool. So the next challenge that we have, um, basically we wanna go through and fill in the blanks for this. So we've got y is equal to a plus b. If we let a is equal to negative one and b is equal to three, we're just gonna substitute those in and we get negative one plus three, which gives us two. And then another substitution practice one. So we're just gonna keep practicing these. So we've got two times a minus three times b. So we go eight, um, let a is equal to negative five, b is equal to four. So pause the video, have a go. So what you should have found is you've got two times negative five minus three times four. So you've got negative 10 minus 12, which gives you negative 22. The next one here, then you've got a squared minus b. And we've gone a is equal to negative two, b is equal to negative three. So just pause the video, see how you go. And you should have got a um, negative two squared minus minus three. So that's the same as four plus three, which then gives you seven. So then this one here, we've got two a minus b squared plus ab. So a is equal to four, b is equal to negative two. So we've got two lots of four minus minus two squared. And notice the negative two is squared all inside here. So we need to do that first and then might do the negative version of it. So this gives us two times four, which is eight. And two, negative two squared becomes four, but then it's the minus version. So that's why it stays negative. And then this one here, four times negative two becomes negative eight. So then that just leaves you with negative four. A little bit more complex one, have a go at this one. So just pause the video. So what you should have found is you would have 14 divided by negative seven plus eight divided by four. So you've got negative two plus two, which then gives you zero. This one here, so we've got ab divided by three plus b, squared, b cubed. So we go a is equal to negative three, b is equal to two. So we've got negative six times two divided by three and then plus two um, cubed. So this becomes negative 12 divided by three plus eight, which then gives us negative four plus eight, which then gives us four. Then this one, just pause the video, have a go, see if you can do this one. So what you should have found is you've got four times five times negative two plus three lots of negative two all squared minus six times four. So when you solve this, um, four times five times negative two gives us negative 40. In this case here, it's plus three times negative two all squared. So we do this first, so it's three times four plus 24, which then gives us negative four plus 12 plus um, 24, which then just leaves us with um, negative four. So that's it for me. There's a Dr. Frost here for you to practice, see how you go with this, a few more substitution ones. These are really important for the exam upcoming. But it's really important when we do the communication law that we understand that you can move the terms around when we add and subtract. Um, because the, the, they're just grouped inside of that. So for example, three plus four is the same as four plus three. That's the communication law that we covered at the beginning. So that's it for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Um, if you did, please give us a like and subscribe as it does help with that YouTube algorithm. And yeah, see you next time on Steam with Steve. Adios.